Hello and welcome to Christ Church Unity. Thank you for tuning in today and watching our video webcast. Thank you for your generous donation that makes this message possible. Many blessings. Thank you again for watching and may God continue to richly bless your life. Uh, that's, uh, I've always loved that song from the first time I heard it, but I don't know if I've ever loved it any more than today. Yeah. So beautiful. The reason is, uh, I mentioned this first service, and I want to mention it again. I have Mary Kay's permission. Mary Kay's really been living this, what the message is today. She's really been living it for the last year. Today is about, really about surrendering, about surrendering to God and about surrendering to God's goodness for you, even when it looks very different from what you might imagine. And one of her, uh, one of her processes was to give away, uh, give, as, give away as in be about her creative energy this year and how much that's brought her has been miraculous. So one of the reasons you felt what you felt during that song, yes, Mary Kay has a beautiful voice, that's true. And she makes anything sound good, that's true. She's a fabulous jazz singer, that's true. But it, I mean, come on. But, but there was an energy and a consciousness with it, and that's what we felt. That's what was touching the heart, and that's what was touching our emotions. And then even when Phyllis and Valerie got closer to her, that support, it's like I could see the heavenly support, the angelic support that surround each one of us as we move forward just a little bit more in faith, right? Could you feel that? It was felt without saying, like a conscious thought about it, right? And that's exactly what today is. And I just wanted to acknowledge Mary Kay in her spiritual work, because I've watched it for the last year. And remember when she was just gone? And then she was just here this last Wednesday night. It was a kid fun night. And she said, hey, would it be okay if I come, you know, as, and do character, caricatures of the kids? I mean, she's a professional caricature artist, right? And so we said, yeah, that'd be okay, you yeah. <laughs> know. And so the kids got this beautiful, these beautiful caricatures of themselves to take home. I mean, what a great Christmas gift, right? What a great way to give of yourself. What a great way to uh, be about giving away your creative gift, right? That's how we have it is to give it away, right? It's amazing, amazing how that's true. So today we are studying a, a scripture. We're in the Gospel of Luke. And I want to say too, Roxanne, I'm just doing shout outs today. That... Roxanne just really did a beautiful job last week about receiving a vision. And one of the most important things she talked about was forgiveness, about the release of the, right, release of the old negative energy and the old ways of doing and being and doing the forgiveness work. A very important part of surrender. So let's look at the scripture we're going to be talking about today. And I want to encourage you, uh, well, as a matter of fact, right now, everybody take out your Bibles. Oh, not all of you bought them. Well, maybe next week you might. <clears throat> And we're going to be going through this. We're, we're laughing because not many people in Unity bring their Bibles. But in, in Unity, Bible, the Bible is our textbook. We just look at it metaphysically, right? We interpret the Bible metaphysically and we see it as, um, let's see, we start way over here with Adam and we end up way over here with Jesus, right? So it's an evolution of humankind, the evolution of consciousness. So that's how we look at it. So this story today that we're looking at is a part of the evolution, literally, of humankind in a very important part of our own spiritual journey. So let's look at the scripture first, and then we'll go a little deeper into it. Um, <clears throat> this Bible that I'm reading from is the New Revised Standard Version, and it's from Luke chapter 1, starting in verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Can you imagine if you were walking along and an angel came to you all of a sudden? Do you think you might be a little perplexed? You know, she was going, what? Okay, anyway. All right. It doesn't say that, but that's what perplexed in the scriptures mean. I mean, everybody right now looked perplexed. Okay. Huh? All right. The angel, we have to update it a little bit. Okay. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor, found favor with God. In other words, don't worry. I got you. You have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, 
How can this be? Since I am a virgin. The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child, sorry, therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Listen to that. For nothing will be impossible with God. Will you say that with me? For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. All right. Beautiful, right? This is a beautiful story of total and utter surrender to the divine by this young girl, Mary. Now, what we don't understand in our culture, Mary was probably about 13 years old uh, when this happened. About 13. Uh, ready to receive, you know, I, I can't imagine uh, receiving a message like that. By the way, I know you weren't planning this, Mary, but you're going to give birth. And by the way, the Holy Spirit's going to be the daddy. And uh, your child is going to be the son of God. And Mary said, okay, sure. What great thing have you been called to lately? And what was your response? This story is not just about a story told a couple thousand years ago, but it's about an understanding of the spiritual journey of your evolving soul, right? So the angel obviously represents a heavenly messenger. How many people in this room have ever said, I know I have had an angel in my life that got me here? Raise your hand. Look around. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Many people have told me about this church. Many, many people have said, you know, I don't know how I got here but there was this person, I was in a 12-step meeting, and somebody mentioned this church, and I got here, and I've never seen that person again. I've never seen him at church. I've never seen him at a meeting. But you know what? They got me here. They were my angel because this is exactly what I needed. Has anybody heard that story? Yeah, yeah, we've all heard it. Right, so what great thing is an angel bringing you right now? What great message? Right, what great directive? Because spirit is always speaking to us. Bill Pindar today has on my favorite shirt. It says, God is still speaking. All of us have heavenly messengers. And sometimes they come in the most strange forms. Sometimes they'll come in a meeting where we think we're in charge. And somebody says something to us. And we say, oh boy, that's exactly what I needed. Sometimes it's going down the road and we see a billboard. And we say, oh, that was a message for me. I don't care what anybody says. That billboard is just for me. And then you swear the next time you go by, the billboard's not there anymore. Has that happened to anybody? A friend of mine who's a prosperity teacher was really stuck, you know, in her prosperity. And she's like, I teach this stuff. My prosperity is kind of stuck. And she's going down the road. And she sees a sign. And it says, she was saying, Spirit, what do I do? And she saw this really big billboard. And it said, up your giving. She said, Okay. Is some ad for something? And nope. She said, that was what I needed. That was my divine messenger. Right? So what's your divine messenger? What messages are you receiving? How are you to use those messages in to move forward to birth something great? See, this season is about us taking in this divine energy, allowing the presence of the Holy Spirit to be alive in us so that we create something beautiful and wonderful and miraculous and amazing. That's going to change us and change the world. And as we do that, the kingdom of no end will be alive in us. The only way the kingdom with no end is alive is through you. Right? Jesus did his part. Your turn. Your turn. Right? So there is some heavenly messenger, messenger bringing you a message. Maybe the message has already been brought and you're going like this. You say, no, that must be the girl down the street. The guy down the street cannot be me. I'm sure. I'm busy. You say, I've got plans. Right? I've got, I've got stuff I'm doing. I've got a certain money, amount of money I need to make. You think you know more than spirit. Right? Now, what I love about this in the story is Mary didn't say, you know what, God? I am only 13 and I am a virgin, as everyone knows. And, uh, you know, I think you must be talking to this girl over here. Uh uh. I don't understand it, but I think I'm just going to say, Here am I. It's the faith of a child, really. The faith of a child. That's what I love. The innocence of a 13 year old that would only say yes to that. 
A grown-up would be too jaded. Can't be me. I'm busy. I've got other things to do, we say. I've got other plans we think God doesn't know about. So how do we do the surrender thing? I, I want to talk about the word surrender because so often in our culture it means I've just given up. I don't know what to do. I may as well surrender. I give up. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. And it is that, but it's from a spiritual perspective. It's more than that. It's not a giving up or a giving in. It's a giving to the, the, the holy, the good. It's like saying to the universe, yes, I allow the good that you want to bring me to come in, knowing that what we're saying yes to is absolute love. And that the thing that you will be led to will be better than your personality has ever even thought about. Because you can't even think of what goodness God wants to bring you. I can't tell you how in the last few weeks um, I've had little things happen here and there that I could have never dreamed up. But I've been in a real place of surrender. I don't know, God. I don't know. I don't know what you want me to do, God. But I'm surrendered. I'm moving forward. That last Sunday going to Savannah, that was kind of a last minute. I already had the Sunday off. It's very rare. Usually in December I do take a Sunday, but I had no plan to go anywhere. And this was meant to be to go support my friend down there. And then the place I stayed that ended up being divine order and right around the corner and the connection I made with the inn owner. It was all, it was all planned already. Right? I just had to say yes. I almost didn't stay there. I almost didn't stay there because I almost said it's too much money for just me. I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. Should I do it? Maybe I'll sleep on, her, on my friend's couch. You know, I don't know. And the Spirit said, no, you're worth it. You do. And then I had the whole place to myself, a gorgeous turn of the century in. You cannot believe how rich I felt in that place. Rich. How totally prosperous I felt and totally taken care of. What would you like for breakfast? I, you have the whole house. Order it up. I've got plenty. And then the connection I made with her was something I've been working on in my personal life about my heritage and my ancestry that that was just like in the first five minutes we were talking about that now how would that happen otherwise even if it would have been happening before my surrender situation I wouldn't have been able to hear it I would have said you know I don't know this person you know what I mean do we don't we do that we're so busy looking cool and hip that there's absolutely no chance for learning right we know so much and we try to look so good you know we 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 can't learn anything Right? So we have to move to a place of surrender. So, but we move to the place of surrender. It's a good thing because you're surrendering to God. You're surrendering to the goodness God has for you. Wouldn't that be amazing if everybody in this room this season made a choice to consciously surrender to the good God has for them to experience it in this season? Because there's a, there is a wonderful energy coming in. That's a creative birth energy that's being celebrated all over the world. All right. I got to read this poem to you. So Spirit saying, "Be quiet." So I'm gonna listen because uh, the beginning of this poem says, uh, "You and I have spoken all these words." In other words, Spirit saying, "Do the poem. Don't talk about it." Right. So this poem uh, really touches me, and uh, it's a Rumi poem. And many of you know Rumi was a 13th century mystic, right? So uh, both Rumi and Hafiz are about a hundred years apart. Are really favorite poets of mine, and it, I always find the right one that, that touches me, and I hope it will help you and support your, the idea of surrender for you in your life. It's a long poem, so I asked uh, Michael to put it up on the screen so you could follow along. It's called uh, A Necessary Autumn Inside Each. You and I have spoken all these words, but as for the way we have to go, words are no preparation. There is no getting ready other than grace. My faults have stayed hidden. One might call that a preparation. I have one small drop of knowing in my soul. Let it dissolve in your ocean. There are so many threats to it. Inside each of us, there's continual autumn. Our leaves fall and are blown out over the water. A crow sits in the blackened limbs and talks about what's gone. Then your generosity returns, spring, moisture, intelligence, the scent of hyacinth and rose and cypress. Joseph is back, and if you don't feel in yourself the fres freshness of jo Joseph, be Jacob. Weep and then smile. Don't pretend to know something you haven't experienced. There's a necessary dying, and then Jesus is breathing again. 
Very little grows on jagged rock. Be ground, be crumbled, so wildflowers will come up where you are. You've been stony for too many years. Try something different. Surrender. Right? In other words, quit resisting everything that's coming to you. Surrender. Surrender. Especially the things that you don't like. Surrender. And surrender, you know, the good news is you don't necessarily have to do it in front of God and everybody unless you're a minister. And then you'll do it every Sunday at 9, 15, and 11. (laughs) But what you get to do in your work, (laughs) my prayer for you, how you get to do it, is you go home and you get in a quiet space. You tell everybody, do not interrupt me. The scriptures say, go into your closet and shut the door. Go into a quiet place and then you have your time of surrender. And the surrender may look like, oh no, what's the... That's perfect. It would be the first time you told the truth all year. (laughs) And give all that to spirit. And then let that space that you empty out, let spirit fill that with goodness. All right, that's very, very important. Go into your closet and close the door. My friend Arlene, who I was just visiting with in Savannah, she's, I have so much respect for her. She's over 70 years old. My gosh, she's in better shape than I am. I can barely keep up with her. And um, <clears throat> she just did a 30-day silent retreat. I mean, that, you know, that's some serious silence, right? She, she, ain't, she ain't playing, you know? I mean, 30 days. I, I've done several, three, four. But that 30, I can't imagine 30. What, what must you find out about yourself in 30 days? Um, but anyway, on one of her retreats, it was her first one. I think it was a, maybe it was her first nine-day retreat. She, she said she was feeling nothing, you know, going crazy in the silence, wanting to just leave the place. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the meditation, everybody's sitting there in meditation, she got this guidance to get up and <clears throat> go into the closet. She's like, you know, it's the first thing I've gotten, so here's all these people. It's a Buddhist retreat center. She goes, she gets up, everybody's sitting there in meditation. She goes in the closet and shuts the door. And I said, well, what happened? She said, well, it was really miraculous. I said, well, what? She said, well, I was sitting there meditating and all of a sudden, Jesus comes to me. I said, well, the scriptures say, go into your closet and close the door. She goes, I know. <laughs> That's what I thought. She said, and I finally said, nothing is working. I'm just going to do what spirit says because I've run out of ideas. I'm going crazy. What if we could do it before we're going crazy? What if we could consciously say, okay, this holiday season, I'm going to practice the act of surrender before I am forced into it. Before the traffic and the lines and the money and the stress and the hassle and the family dynamics force me there. What if I could start in surrender And move with ease and grace through the holiday season. What a great idea. Try something different. Surrender. I'm also going to encourage you to have some affirmation that kind of brings you back. And the the song that Mary Kay is going to do in a minute, it's actually a a hymn. It's out of the Methodist hymnal. You won't quite recognize it the way they do it, which is what I love. I know nobody does Sue better than Sue, right? I mean, um, so wonderful, the energy and the music that she brings and with this team, right? Incredible team today. But um, <clears throat> but in the, song, in the scripture, it's here am I, servant of the Most High God. And sometimes I say that because I like quoting the scripture, you know, being a minister and all. I, sometimes I like doing it just the way it is in the good book. I like to say, here am I, servant of the Most High. But we don't talk like that anymore, right? <clears throat> in the song she's going to sing, it's here I am, Lord, it is I, Lord. It's an affirmation. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go if you lead me. Right? So that might be a great affirmation. Here I am, Lord. It is I. It is I. Right? To use that as an affirmation. So when you get up in the morning, here I am, Lord. It is I. Right? Here am I, servant of the Most High God. Take that into your time of prayer. Take that into your time of meditation. Take that into your work day. And when something starts going weird, because it will, because it's the holidays and everybody's stressed out, Here I am. You can say that totally silent to yourself. And you'll find yourself, your body posture will change. The energy in in your mind will change. Here I am. Right? 
Here I am, Lord. It is I. Here am I, servant of the Most High God. All right, let's go into a time of prayer just briefly together. As we pray, God, we do in this moment consciously say, we surrender. I surrender. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to surrender to what's happening. And as I surrender, I know I'm going to receive direction. I'm going to receive guidance. I'm going to receive a feeling and knowing of what to do and how to move and how to change and how to shift if it's needed. I'm also going to know how to just be still if that's needed. Here am I, servant of the Most High God. Here I am, Lord. It is I. I have heard you. And I will go where you lead. So for our time together of prayer and meditation, God, we give thanks. I acknowledge each soul in this room for the spiritual work they're doing. I acknowledge each soul as they move forward in faith to continue the evolution of consciousness, to move consciousness forward in, through, and as each one of us. For our time of prayer together and our time of celebration that we know is the Sunday morning service, together we say, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. Together, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.